Yeah. We gotta run out and back. What's good, YouTube? We're gonna run back a previously done effect, the infinite zoom transition. In this video, I actually got two different workflows for you. One is a little bit easier than the other, but neither one of them are too hard to do. I'm gonna use this clip here in a future video. I'm gonna move my playhead to close to the end. Actually, I'm gonna move it all the way to the end. Then I'm gonna hit the arrow key to the left once or twice. Then I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard and select freeze frame. I'm gonna hold Alt to my keyboard and scroll the mouse wheel to stretch out the timeline. Then I'm gonna click on my clip, hit Control. D is going to bring the clip duration. I'm usually a transition about a second long, so I'm going to make it one second or 24 frames. Basically, just change up depending on the frame rate of your clip. One second, hit change, or you can type in 24 frames. Then I'm going to right click and then select open infusion. So, in infusion, I'm going to select my media one and I'm going to grab a polygon mask. I'm going to select invert and inspect the tab so I can see my clip. I'm going to hold control and zoom in on my clip so I can zoom in. Then I'm just going to mask out this window. Once your mask is complete, don't forget to add a little soft edge. Now we're gonna bring in our 3D elements. So I'm gonna click on the media one, I'm gonna go over here to my toolbar and select the image plane, merge 3D, camera 3D, and then render 3D. I'm gonna go up here and I'm turn on dual viewers, and then I'm gonna click my merge 3D, click one on the keyboard, holding alt, and clicking the mouse wheel, I can scroll around to see my 3D image. Now I'm gonna take that render 3D and connect it to my media out. And it should go transparent here at the bottom. I'm gonna click on my image plane, so now I'm gonna click on the image plane, go in the special tab, transform, and I'm gonna move Z space until I can see my subject. The number here in Z space will vary depending on your clip. So now I'm gonna select my medium one, my polygon, and my image plane. I'm gonna move it over to the side. I'm gonna select, select the image plane, hit control and space. I'm gonna type in duplicate. Make sure you get the duplicate 3D. Hit that, and basically what we're gonna do is create an animation for the zoom effect first. So I'm gonna to go to the very first frame. And what we're gonna do is go down here on the Z axis and set the keyframe. I'm gonna go back over here to copies. You can type in what, how many copies you want. I'm gonna type in 10. And then I'm gonna go about six, seven frames. I'm gonna go frame seven. And then I'm gonna create an animation for the Z axis. Actually, I'm gonna go back the other way. Scroll to the left. And you can make this as long as you want. You can see the different copies right here in the 3D viewer. Just make sure you don't go back too far because then you'll see the transparency in the background. So now if I go back to my second viewer here and zoom in, I'm just gonna refine that animation a little bit. Basically, I'm gonna stretch it out so I can see the different copies of future. Then once I can see his face there, I'm pretty much good on, how, on the distance that I wanna use. And then I'm just gonna animate the camera from there. So we'll click on camera 3D, go to transform, click on the Z axis as it is in the seventh frame, and basically go to the last frame of your clip. I'm just gonna move in Z space. So I'm gonna move to the left, which in my situation is gonna be negative. And actually right there, you can see I actually moved out too far on the Z space on my cop on my duplicates. So I'm actually going to go back and change that a little bit here. So I'm just continue to move through all the way to the end. And they're basically going to set up the transition. So I'm going to actually go back to frame seven and go back to my duplicate node. And I'm going to move in just a little bit, creating a little bit less space in between my clips. Then I'm going to go to the render 3D, click on settings and turn on the motion blur. I'm going to crank this up to 10. And then for the shutter angle, I'm going to type in 280. Then I'm going to go to my spline, move this down, move this back down, click on my camera 3D, select the camera 3D, zoom to fit so I can see my keyframes, click here to select all keyframes and hit S to smooth. And then I'm going to add a little bit more easing on the end, so I'm going to hit T for ease in, ease out, and I'm going to turn the ease in up to about 45, 50. So now I'm going to go back to the edit page. Whatever clip you want to transition to, you're just basically going to place it underneath this clip here. I'm going to go to my media pool and grab a clip real quick. So to kind of ease into this transition, I'm gonna use a brightness flash. I'm gonna go into the effects tab, not so shameless plug. Instead of using flash, which is I use all the time, I'm gonna use another transition. I'm actually gonna use the one that comes with my Essentials Editor bundle pack. I'm gonna use a luminous scroll, which basically just scroll through the luminous of your uh, channel, which is basically the brightest parts of your video. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna drag and drop, but I don't need it to be the full transition, so I'm gonna go over here and type in 10. I'm gonna make it about 10, actually I'm making five. Now this transition can be resource heavy, you wanna make sure you have your render cache on. So I'm gonna go up here now to playback, Render cache, I get it set to smart. That way, I render cache the transition and more well, the drag and drop transition I use, and also the zoom in transition. I'm gonna go back now and show you the secondary workflow while also creating the video, the zoom in effect from the little Tekka video. So, I'm back in Fusion, I'm gonna go through now and actually delete this duplicate node. And my camera node, I'm gonna reset it. 
as far as the keyframes mm -hmm. and stuff. So everything else remains the same as far as the mask and all this stuff. Basically, what we're going to do is grab a couple of image planes. So I'm going to grab at least about four or five of them and just make sure you t connect all of them to the Merge 3D. And I'm just going to layer them like this to keep it a little bit more organized. And basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over to the side here, put this down here. I'm going to grab one more and connect it to the Merge 3D. And then I'm going to take the output of my media one and connect it to each one of those merges. Now, this workflow is more or less the same as the one I did in my original video, which you can check out here if you want to check it out. But this here is a little bit more optimized because in that original video, I actually copied the media one and the image plane and all this stuff multiple times, which actually is not very optimized. Whereas this flow here, I only have that one video or that one image running through the multiple image planes, therefore optimizing the transition, making it a little bit less taxing on your computer. So now what we're going to do is select the image plane, go into transform, and basically just utilizing the 3D viewer, my merge 3D viewer here. Just gonna move it back on Z in the Z space. So oh, zoom out. There we go. So now I'm just gonna move this back to my original clip is right here. So I'm just gonna move this back past behind that original clip, about right there, and then just repeat that with each one of the image planes. As you can see right here, right now they actually up here and in, right inside the camera. So I'm just gonna keep moving them back in Z space, creating that space. Now this look like the exact same setup, but with it being individual image planes, now we have the ability to rotate them. So now I'm not going to do anything with the original image plane. I'm going to go to my second one here, and then we're going to rotate on the Z axis. You can see down here, it's starting to rotate. It's a little bit taxing, so I'm going to actually go up here to playback, timeline resolution. I'm going to change it to half. And then I'm going to go down here where the little play button is, right click. I'm going to turn off high quality and turn off motion blur. Now it looks a little pixelated, but basically just make it smoother for, or easier for us to edit in. Right, so now when you're done, each one of them should basically be flipped a different way. So I'm looking at my first viewer here, or my top viewer, and I hold Alt and click the mouse wheel, rotate around. See one going that way, one going that way. They're basically going reverse of one another. So now we're going to animate the camera. Just like the previous effect, I'm just going to go into the first frame, go to Transform, set a keyframe on Z-axis, and I'm going to go all the way to the end, which in my clip, I extended the clip a little bit, so it's 39 frames, or actually 40 frames. I'm going to go to frame 39. I'm basically going to zoom in, but I'm not going to go all the way through. I'm going about right here, basically a little bit close to the end. So this is going to give you this rotating zoom through. Now, if you want to more or less keep the linear um, animation, so if you go to the spline tab, click on 3D camera, zoom to fit. We're going to select all keyframes, hit S to smooth, but then I'm going to hold Alt or Option if you're on Mac, and then you're going to grab this little handle here and bring it back. Try to keep some of the linear motion, but also creating a small uh, animation curve. My animation curve is going to look like that, and then I'm going back into the edit page. So now back on the edit page, I'm going to use an effect for my Essentials Editor Bundle Pack, which if you have not picked up yet, you can pick it up. The link in the description. Use code GAC for 10% off. So I'm going to grab an adjustment clip first, and then I'm going to make it the length of my transition or my effect. I'm going to split the clip and delete that back in. I'm going to go into Effects, GS Effects, Godsend Essentials. And I'm going to grab this handheld camera motion. I'm going to drop it on the adjustment clip. If you have a problem with any of these effects rendering, just make sure you go to right click, go to go to render cast fusion effects and click on the name. Some of the stronger effects won't render right off the back, so you can do that and it'll go ahead and kickstart the process. So I'm going here now and turn down the speed on the handheld. It's separated by the X and Y axis. So I'm going to also turn down the Y axis as well. And this is going to create a little subtle handheld motion. Now with this effect, you can notice that the clip, once you get towards the end, you can't really see what's going on which is not going all the way through, but if you do want to realign the clip where it is in view, just click on your clip that's underneath your transition, or underneath your effect in this case, and then just reposition it using the transform tools on the edit page. I'm going to move this around on position scale. As you can see, this, this is transparent. So you can actually see the, the clip there. I'm going to move this down on the y-axis and basically just find Future's face in this clip. Now I got on this face, I can zoom in if I want to just a little bit and have it centered on him, but now we got the clip on each side. That's just because the clip has a weird, the base has a four by three ratio. So I'm going in here to, I'm going to go down to cropping and I'm just going to crop the left and right. And right now, see so zooming in, I can see the space from the actual clip in the background. Basically, you want to go through and just readjust your Z space if you want to get rid of that. So I'm clicking on the clip here. I'm going to open back in Fusion. And basically, I'm going to close my spline tab. 
see stuff like this where basically just too much space and you see the transparency. I'm just gonna go in here and find which axis that is. And then just moving in on Z space and closing that gap. You can also use the 3D duplicate to create other effects as well. Let me show you. So I got a clip from the Big X the Plug video. I see this effect a lot in his videos. So I'm gonna actually just take my clip and go into Fusion. I'm gonna be using Magic Mask for this. If you want to, you can do the same thing using Runway and Mail, or you can create a freeze frame. So I'm gonna just select my Media One, go and select my ma Magic Mask. I'm basically gonna select his necklace. I'm gonna hold Alt and unselect this part. I don't want that part, I just want basically the charm. And it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Then I'm just gonna do a track back and forth real quick. So not a lot of motions, so it picks up pretty good. And then I'm gonna grab an image plane. I'm gonna connect the output of the Magic Mask to the image plane. And then grab a duplicate 3D. Grab a merge 3D. Actually, I really don't need a merge 3D, but it's easy to see it in 3D space if you want to do it that way. And then grab a render 3D. And then I'm gonna connect the render 3D back to the media out. Now that's just gonna leave the charms. So now we gotta bring back the media. To keep this optimized as possible. We're just gonna use the same media node again. Just take the output of that media node, connect it to the render 3D. It's gonna create a merge. So now our clip is back. So I'm gonna click the 3D mer merge 3D and hit one on the keyboard so I can see it in 3D view. So then we'll go to the first frame, click on a 3D node or a duplicate 3D node, and type in how many copies it wants. So I'm gonna do 10 again. I'm gonna go down to the Z axis translation, set the keyframe, go a couple frames in, go to the 446, and then create a animation of the Z axis. Now you can't see it because it's actually underneath our original. Uh, layer, so I'm gonna fix that here in just a second. Need it by right there, and I'm gonna go click on this merge node and change the operator from over to under. So now you can see the the, uh, the actual charm. So go back and click on the duplicate 3D, and what I'm gonna do is go back to the first frame, set keyframes at X and Y axis, go back to where the animation is, and I'm gonna move the translation. So move this. I'm gonna click on my image plane, go to transform, and move this down the Y axis. And basically, more or less line up with his original charm. And then I'm gonna turn up the scale just a little bit. Try to match the size. I'm gonna go back to the first frame and see now and see how well it matches up. Scale up just a little bit more, and then I'm gonna move it back up on the Y axis. Basically, wanna have it overlay over it. Once you got it lined up, you can go back now and play the animation out. And it's going downward, basically off frame. So I'm going back to my duplicate 3D. And I'm just going to rotate it on the... I'm going to rotate on the X axis now. And if you want, you can rotate on the Y axis and basically just choose the direction you want it to go in. Right now, it's actually bending. So if you go too far, it'll actually bend around into a complete 360. So actually, I'm going to go through and move the X axis back a little bit. So now we basically have this charm animating in 3D space. Now to clean things up with this effect a little bit, we're going to go into the duplicate node, go into the first frame of my clip, where it says copies. We want to keyframe the copies. So I'm going to set a keyframe and set it to one for here. And then I'm going to go into, then I'm going to go to the same keyframe where I set the Z animation. And then turn the copies back up to 10. So the Z axis and the copies are animated at the same time. Then I'm going to go into the last frame and animate the copies. So I'm actually going to go one frame before the end and set a keyframe. That way I hold the 10 copies. Then I go to the very last frame and turn it back to one. So now we're going to go into the spline editor and just move it all out. So go to spline. I'm going to select the duplicate node. So I'm, oh, I'm going to zoom to fit. Select all my frames. Of course, you're going to hit S to smooth. And then that render 3D node. I actually go back. So the duplicate node, zoom to fit. This here is our hold animation. That's the hold of the copies. We actually don't want to smooth it out. So I'm going to box select these two points here. Then I'm going to go down here at the bottom and reselect linear. That way we keep that animation flat. Then go into the render cache. Well, not render cache, but the uh, render 3D and activate the motion blur. If you want to know more about my editor central bundle, the link will be in the description. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Yo.